Hey everyone, Indyman here. Uh, so you guys are here. You want to build a property portfolio in UK. Let me help you with that. I'll give you 10 simple steps which you need to follow. And if you follow these steps properly, you will 100% sure you will succeed in uh, building a good, successful portfolio here in the UK. Uh, it can work all around the world, world really, uh, if you follow these uh, steps. So let me help you with these simple, easy, basic to follow steps. Don't forget, we run Man's Academy as well. We run courses in all these um, strategies, all these um, uh, training programs. And uh, you can learn a lot by joining my academy. So if you do want to join my academy, I will leave the link below. And you can um, just click the link, go to my website, go on to contact us page, and uh, there you go. You'll be all set. So without any delay, let's start the video first. And I will show you why I'm here and uh, why there's lots of paint on my top as well. I'm actually in my office here. Well, it's my office and this is our classroom as well. Um, anyway, let's start with the video first of all. Okay, if you want to build a portfolio in UK, it can be very fruit, fruitful, long-term uh, investment strategy, okay? So building a portfolio can give you a nice, easy, passive income over the time and which you can sort of take into your retirement as well and you don't need to work ever after that once you've built a few properties and you you replaced replaced your um, income which is paying your bills so in a sense you're financially free then okay and then if you want to build more wealth after that if you want to make more money after that you can carry and grow in your portfolio right okay so I'm going to give you 10 tips, 10 points, simple to follow. Here goes point number one. First of all, before you start your uh, portfolio, before you start pr property investing journey, you need to set clear goals. You need to know, you need to tell yourself, no one else, you need to write these down. That Are you looking for uh, like a rental income or are you looking for capital growth of your uh, properties or are you looking for both? Personally, me, I look for both, okay? Um, I look for rental income, so it gives me a good cash flow. And I also look for uh, capital appreciation as well. So that means we have to source properties, we have to buy properties in uh, areas where uh, we can achieve both um, without too much hard work, obviously. We don't want to work too hard, do we? Well, we don't want to work hard. We want our money to work hard for us. In order to do that, you need to know what you're doing and you need to watch this video till the end, okay? So, number one is you need to set your goals clear. You need to know exactly what you want from property journey. You know, you need to know what do you want from your portfolio. You need to know all that, okay? Write these points down so you're um, not missing on any, okay? Uh, that brings me to number two. Number two is your financial planning. Once you've set your goals clearly, now you need to know that... Uh, what your budget is, what can you afford, how much can you afford to invest into property. You don't have to have, say, 100,000, 200,000 pounds to start in the property journey, but you're going to need some capital, right? You can't do it for free. Um, there's people out there who say to you, you can buy a property for free, you can buy a property for one pound, 50 pence, 75 pence, 25 pence. Uh, it's all bull, okay? Don't believe that rubbish. They're telling you nonsense. In property journey, you're going to need some money. You're going to need money to start with, all right? Yes, there are. Um, there could be ways like, say, if you was investing in crowd investing, you can all chip in £5,000. So can you imagine if you're going to buy a house which is worth under 50000 how many 5000 you need? How many people you actually need to complete the purchase? And... That's just, that's just the asking price, the price you're going to pay. And there would be more costs after that or even before you get the keys for the property. Nothing's free in this world. Remember that, okay? But there are ways. So you got to be 
more innovative. You gotta be more creative, all right? Find creative solutions to buy a property. But there's no such thing as buying property for free. You can control someone's property for free, but for how long? Okay, so you need some cash. So sort out your financial planning. Sort out where you can afford to invest in property, and always consider the fees such as uh, stamp duty, legal costs, holding costs, and there's maintenance and stuff like that. Okay, so sort your finances out. Even if you need to get an advice from a financial advisor, do that before you start your property journey. Before you start investing in property. Um, that brings me to number three. Number three is research the market properly. So I've always said that I said then I said that in my last video as well. Look at different locations before you start investing. Look at the different property types. Look at the rentals in the market, rental yields in the area, the capital growth, the market trends. You need to be aware of all these factors and. You can learn all these factors if you educate yourself. Nowadays, there's so much content on YouTube. There's lots of videos like mine. There's lots of good property uh, teachers here in uh, based in Birmingham. That's where I'm from. All around the country, we've got really good teachers who are actually telling the genuine things. They're doing what they're doing, and they're teaching you what they're doing as well. So I'm really happy with that. There, there are so many genuine people now. Uh, whereas in the past it was really hard to find genuine person there was people who were just sitting in the office i'm sitting in the office right now as well yeah but don't forget we do property as well um i'm in the office now because after this tip actually i'll uh, show you exactly what i'm doing and then we'll carry on so yes research the market properly make sure you do look at all the trends look at the locations the property types what property type is working in which area all right and uh, for example in a tight city center space um, you're gonna get more apartments flats uh, whereas if you go in the suburb um, where people you will find like open spaces big drives and stuff like that and then you gotta weigh the situation where the rental market is hot whether it's in city center whether it's in the suburb it's not always this, the case that you're going to get more rent in the city center, less in the suburb, okay? Sometimes it works differently. I mean, I've got a friend who runs an Airbnb on the road where I live. And uh, I had, he knows who he is if he watches this video. Um, if I would have never thought of having an Airbnb on my road, but he's running it successfully. And uh, I've just found out about a year or so ago that he was doing it. And I was surprised first, but when I looked at the trends carefully, it's possible. So always look at the trends. Always look, research the market properly, all right? Before I show you what I'm doing here, let me give you number four quickly. Number four is start small. Don't try to bite more than you can chew when you start, all right? Otherwise, uh, you're just going to lose some money and you're going to lose total interest in the whole investing thing. And you're going to think that this is not for me and you're going to walk away from it. So start small. It works for any business, really, any startup business. Start small and then slowly, once you build up your knowledge, once you know what you're doing, your experience expands, then grow. Then just start growing slowly, gradually, okay? If you do it gradually, the bubble ain't going to bust. If you're trying to just blow really hard in the first go, then obviously it's going to bust, all right? It's common sense. Um, Take it easy when you start buy your first property buy a small property build up your experience from that property rent it out test the waters and once you know that you're confident enough now to go ahead full steam and go for it all right um i'm teasing you now i'm going to tell you number five as well before that that brings me the halfway of the video then then i'll tell you exactly what i'm doing here in the office today um and why the walls are really messy behind me and everything i'll tell you we had a bit of a disaster here, really. Okay, number five is financing. All right. Uh, I know I talked about in number two step about financial planning, but this is different now. You need to explore um, different finance options that are available to you. Are you even, um, are you even going to get any finance? Are you even, are you going to get a mortgage or do you have to go for a bridge? Um, don't forget. Your credit rating has to be really good. 
Um, I mean, I've got three kids myself and uh, they're 18, 15 and 13. I have actually got them their individual cards right now, which are topped them up. They're like a debit card, kind of credit card, debit card thing. And every time they use their own money out of that card and we pay it back or they pay it back, I teach them how to pay it back within the first month you borrow. It's building up their credit limit, all right? It's building their credit rating, basically. So you need to... Let, you need to make sure that your credit is uh, good, your credit rating is good. If your credit rating is not good at the moment, then outlet wise, before start investing in anything, in property, any business, go for clearing your credit first. If you owe money, clear it. Go with the biggest, uh, biggest debt, which has got the biggest interest. So it's taking lots of money out of your pocket. Start paying that. Start eating into that, okay? Bit by bit. Pay more than your uh, minimum monthly payments, and that's the only way you're going to build your credit rating. So, if you're in this scenario now, credit rating is good. So, explore different situations, all right? Try to go and talk to banks, go and talk to mortgage brokers, go and look at different kind of mortgages, go and look at there's a mortgage, then there's a buy to let mortgage, then there's other loans. You can look at private investors who want to invest with you. You can you can look at uh, private investors, obviously, who want to return on their money. You can look at joint ventures. There's people out there who want to do this similar property kind of property work with you uh, in order to, one, gain experience, second, make some money out of the whole project. There's people out there who will invest with you, learn, but then they will leave you with the whole property as long as you pay them back their money with, obviously, some interest, whatever you're... Um, uh, whatever you have uh, decided to do your uh, terms yeah so compare different interest rates different loan terms um, so familiarize with these things before you step into the world of property now let me show you what I'm exactly doing here I'm just gonna turn the camera around from where I am so I'm there in the mirror as well see my ladder here I'm actually in my office and uh, I started clearing everything up. You can see lots of paint, everything there. There's some paint there, some boards, notice boards on the floor. We had a disaster. We had um, a major leak coming down this wall here. And uh, so all that was done, we waited for it to dry up. But we're gonna start painting uh, and uh, redecorating the office today. So I will show you as how far I go with this. We have not actually decorated. I'm actually at my offices today. As you can see, lots of cars, lots of minibuses. Um, that's because all the mechanics are working there on that. And this is my office anyway. Uh, this is what I work from. This is where I operate from. And it's all going to be uh, revamped. So that's what I'm doing here today. That's why I got these clothes on. I'm working myself. I am doing the project myself and I'm on my own today here. Mechanics are outside. No one's here helping me today. My builders are not here. My labor is not here today. It's just me alone, okay? Uh, just sometimes it's good to go back to the bare basics um, and uh, do things yourself as well. I'm a big believer of that. So anyway, let me take you back to the, the points, what I was telling you about getting into property, building a property portfolio. So now assuming that you've done the past five steps and you're on number six now, yeah, it's time that you start searching for the property now. So number six is basically called property search in my tip. You need to consider when you're searching for a property, you need to look for, you need to look for the good location. You need to look for the rental demand in the area. You need to look for potential income. And uh, obviously, uh, biggest one of all is the future capital growth. So you need to buy your property in such a place where um, all these things are sort of, uh, all these boxes are being ticked. The rental demand is going to be good in the area. The capital growth is going to be there. Uh, you need to also see you need to buy a property where the potential the income rental income is good as well you don't want to buy a property in an area where you'll buy a house for say two hundred thousand and the rental income is only about six hundred six seven hundred pounds a month 
um, you're not gonna get any good yield out of that. You don't get no, you won't get no return. So uh, that'd be pointless. And plus, it'll probably hardly even cover your costs. So I always consider when you're looking for your property uh, for all these things: location, rental demand, potential income, capital growth, as such. Yeah. Uh, that brings me to number seven. Number seven is legal taxes. Okay, whichever country you're in, I'm talking about UK here now, but wherever you are, you need to get the knowledge about the tax process. Uh, you need to know the that what you're obliged to pay to the government and what taxes you will uh, attract uh, with the property portfolio. You need to know all that. You need to talk to a tax advisor. You need to talk to a solicitor. To get a clear understanding of your legal obligations you don't want to be uh, again stuck in a trap where you don't know anything uh, about taxes i had a i actually was speaking to somebody um early last week and uh, the gentleman he's a he's a multi-millionaire very very rich guy and he's got i think over 148 properties around the country but He's proper old school. Uh, he has not declared anything up until this was last couple of weeks ago, last week, beginning of last week. So that is a big trap what he's in right now because in order to clear his name, to declare everything what he's got, the government's going to tax, the HM revenue is going to go back all the way wherever, when he bought his first property. And can you imagine the kind of trouble he's in right now? So always do the right thing. Always get familiar with the legal your legal obligations. Talk to a tax advisor. Talk to a solicitor so they put you on the right path. Okay? Don't go in this blindly because you will get into trouble later on. And later on, the trouble is so big that in the beginning, it could have been sorted out really easily. Then later on in your property journey, once you got about 5, 10, 15 properties, it gets very hard okay so make it easy for yourself from day one do the right thing all right so number eight is a management strategy now i've got properties all around uk in birmingham west midlands we manage our properties ourselves my company does it itself but uh, obviously properties all around the country i can't be there all the time i can't manage them myself my team can't manage them so we always use um, uh, good agents, local agents in the area. I try to go with myself. I try to go with smaller independent companies rather than big branded names uh, because I've realized that more hungry somebody is for something, the better they will be at, at the job. Uh, when the hunger goes, in my sense, when the hunger goes, the desire goes, people get like kind of uh, lazy about their work. People think, oh, um, it will happen when it'll happen you know that kind of attitude i don't like that so find a decent local estate agent and work with them like i said west midlands we uh, we kind of manage our properties ourselves out of midlands uh, we source the work to other agents so always think about your management strategy what do you want to do uh, obviously buying close to home is easier you can manage it yourself but then think is that a good idea that he's going to buy everything close to your house or in your city? There could be better, more lucrative deals waiting for you out there, uh, which you're going to kind of uh, restrict yourself from if you're going to just buy close to home. So think of that uh, number eight, this point management strategy really carefully when you're investing. Um, my first property I bought was in, uh, in Hull in Yorkshire. Um, I've got uh, two, three properties there now. They, they are, all three of them are HMOs. They're close to uh, the university there. Uh, so Hull is from Birmingham. It's probably about three and a half hours drive, and uh, there's no way in the world I could manage those properties. But uh, my agent there is managing them really well. And I could have easily thought, oh, my first property I'm going to buy next door on the next road. Uh, I can walk around. I can manage it myself don't fall into that trap buy wherever it works buy wherever it works for your strategy whatever strategy you're using okay um so now let's go to number nine 
Uh, number nine would be diversity, diversify. Uh, you need to diversify your portfolio. You can't just have uh, one kind of, like I was talking about cities, you can't just have portfolio in one city. You can't just have uh, one kind of properties. You can't just have, um, you know, uh, you can't just have commercial. You got to mix everything, all right? Like our properties, they consist of HMOs. Most of them are HMOs, but then we got mixed use. We got uh, flats. We got shops. Uh, we got different in different locations. Like I was talking, my very first property was bought in Hull in Yorkshire. I got properties in Stoke on Trent, Newcastle under Lyme, Birmingham, West Bromwich, Wolverhampton. So we have to diversify locations. We have to diversify the type of properties we buy. Don't just go with one set of property. Even it works with any investment strategy. It could be uh, you're buying stocks or shares or, you know, um, funds. Uh, diversify. And uh, if you do diversify, you will not uh, lose your money. Like Warren Buffett, he's always said his rule, there's two rules of investing. One is don't ever lose money. And number two, I think you guessed it already, never forget number one. Okay. So there's only one rule in uh, investing is that don't lose money. So that's what we're trying to do. So yeah, diversify and you will not lose the money. Uh, number 10, the last one. Okay. So what you got to do is you got to monitor. You have to always monitor your rental portfolio. Uh, it's very important that from time to time you kind of uh, monitor, look at your portfolio. Uh, obviously, have to go back to your spreadsheets, look at your uh, balance sheets, look what property is performing, which property is not performing. If a portfolio, a part of portfolio is not performing, get rid of it. Sell it, do whatever, get rid of that property, okay? So it's, uh, it's very important that you do monitor your properties, you monitor their performance over time, and I'm sure you will succeed, okay? So lastly, what I want to say to you is that uh, property investing in UK or anywhere in the world, like I said earlier on, it can be very fruitful, it can be very profitable, you can uh, make a very good living, financial freedom, no problem, you can achieve that through property building a portfolio but there's three things you need in property journey and i think every investor every developer goes with that uh, number one is patience number two is persistence number three is being resilient okay you have to have these three um, uh, sort of um, built inside you and if you don't have those then you're not going to succeed in the property world. But I wish you guys all the best. i got to go because uh, looking at the office now, it looks like a, I don't want to say the word, but it looks really bad, okay? So God bless you all. Keep working hard. And I hope these videos help you guys. And I always hope to add value to your life, to your uh, property journey. And if anything I can do, in any way I can help you guys, Come to Man's Academy, my property networking is first Saturday of every month here in my offices. Um, there's an, another one coming up on um, uh, 1st of June, that's a Saturday coming up now. Um, either I have to do it here in this office or I have to do it next door um, in uh, my uh, family office, basically, my brother's office. So let's see where it happens. But keep working hard till then. Keep watching the videos. And if you do like them, thanks for the comments which have been coming from videos recently. Um, it's a real good boost. Uh, it shows me that I'm doing something right by giving you guys these uh, tips and everything. And until the next time, God bless you all. Keep working hard.